every equation, every polynomial to find the roots of unity, right? They're things like, uh, I rubbed it off, like z cubed equals 1, right? Or z to the 8 equals 1, or z to the any integer value, I should say any positive integer value, okay? So I'm going to write those, they're all in the form z to the n equals 1 for n being a positive integer, okay? Now, you remember, right, one of the algebraic tricks we played with this guy was you said, hey, I can rewrite that. I can rewrite that with everything on the left-hand side. I can say this. And that's awesome because I can factorize that thing, right? So I can work with it. I don't need to deal with moduli or arguments, anything like that. I can deal with it in purely rectangular form. And that was really cool. And then I showed you this, right? Which, by the way, is just a scaled and flipped version of this. Right? Roots of unity really helps you understand everything. And we said, uh, hold on, that's not so cool. Right? In fact, I can only factorize it at the moment for n equals 2 and n equals 3. Right? That's a bit of a pain. Except for the fact that you can factorize it. I want you to just write down those factorizations for a second. Right? Z squared, take away 1. What's the factorization? Z Difference of squares, right? Z yes? Care with that? And then z cubed, difference of cubes is? Z minus z. z take away one. Z squared. Z squared, same, opposite, always positive. You came with that? Okay, now you have a look at this with me, right? Mathematicians are always searching for patterns, yeah? Always looking for patterns. Clearly there's a pattern happening here, right? I wonder if we could guess. Hmm. Let's try something, okay? Let's try this. And if I wanted to try to get to the next power, what might you expect we might get over here? Increase each power by one. Why don't we put a, another power in? Yeah? And let's just see what happens, okay? And this is not that hard to do. Z times all of these guys, right? Is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, Z to the 4, Z cubed, Z squared, plus Z, multiply them all by Z. And then, oh, hold on a second. What you subtract, and I'm going to write it underneath because it'll make the, uh, the um, parallel more obvious, is this and this and this and this, right? It's all of these guys, right? So this is all going to cancel in here, and you're just going to be left, sure enough, with this. That's kind of sweet, right? But that's just like a proof by example, which is not a proof, OK? Um, I've got a couple, of, I've got three cases where it works, but can I prove it? Can, can I prove it for all cases, which is what I actually want, OK? Now you can see the business end of all of these factorizations is really this guy, right? Each time, because the z take away one, it's the same every single time. By the way, <coughs> the z take away one is the same every single time. What does that mean about the roots of this equation? It means z equals one is always a solution, which you just told me based on this. Remember, like you, were, you were drawing all of them, right? And you said, "Yeah, I'm always going to get one, always one, always one," and that's why this always appears every time. Okay. Yes. First term of what? Like, if you have like z to the power n equal negative one. Yep. Then the, the roots of it and z plus 1 then z whatever. No, it's z minus 1. The root itself is 1. But the factorization is z minus 1. No, but then like in that one you have the first three whatever root and negative 1. Oh, you're talking about if I'm doing z to the n plus 1. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, z then equals negative okay. 1. Uh, yes, but I'm not going to worry about it because that's not, that's not actually unity. I just oh, okay. did it to demonstrate the actual geometry on it. Okay. Okay, now, look carefully at those things I've underlined in green. Can you look carefully at them? Hmm. What do they share in common? Yeah. They are all positive. They're all, they're all, everything's positive, right? I notice as well, what gets added on each time is, is that between the terms, sum? there's a common ratio a between sum. the terms. If only I had some mathematics <laughs> that could deal with adding up things where there was always a common ratio. Oh, wait, I do because this is a GP. It's always a GP, right? Okay, now my question is, what kind of GP is it, right? Let's write it in a form that's a little more GP type, right? I could say, it always starts with one. I'm going to go in reverse order. 
It always goes to Z and then Z squared. That's three terms, that's enough. What's the last term? Now, in a, in a real sense, it doesn't matter, okay? But for the context of what I'm dealing with, see how I've got a two here and there's all Z one there. Don't move, we'll finish it, I promise we'll be quick. A three and then a two, a four and then a three. I'm gonna go minus one, okay? Now, this is a GP. What's the first term? One. One. What's the common ratio? Z. 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 What's the number of terms? N. N. There, are N. N terms. <laughs> there are N terms, right? So, by definition, the sum of this thing is A, A, first term, times the common ratio to the power of the number of terms there are, take away one, divided by one the common one. ratio Take away one, right? Oh snap, you multiply both sides by Z, take away one, and there is your magic factorization in like barely two lines, okay? Now, that's a really important result because every time you're dealing with roots of unity, which is what you're gonna be looking at in uh, the second half of 1.5, I think, um, you're going to have to deal with an equation like this, which needs to be factorized. And now you can factorize for any power, which is really essential.